Hey, my name is Caitlin Lindahl. I'm the office manager here at Modern Law, and I want to take a few minutes to go over billing with you. Um, it's definitely a hiccup that is sometimes hard to understand, and we want to make sure that you have a minute to get some key pointers on how our invoice structure works, how we do it, so that then you can um, better understand all of the work that we're doing on your behalf and with you. Uh, we send out invoices twice a month on the 5th and the 20th. The days may vary a little bit if those days land on a weekend, so you may get it the Friday before or the Monday after. Uh, they'll come in an email and there'll always be an attachment in the email. It's very, very, very important that you please open that attachment and read through the, um, the items that we're doing in the case um, so that you can make sure that you understand uh, what's going on in your case and if you have any questions or concerns we can address that really quickly since we invoice twice a month um, we can always take a look at that and help you understand what's going on in your case and if you want any changes or adjustments made that's a really easy way for us to get that addressed one other thing to note is that we want to make sure that you know that you can always ask us any questions if you have any confusions on the billing i'm going to run through this video and I hope that you watch it so that you can maybe get some pointers done. But if you still have questions, please note you can always reach out. Any questions that actually have to do with the billing never get charged. So don't feel like you can't reach out about questions that regard to billing because you might get charged because that's not the case. Um, so let's dive in. We utilize Clio and uh, we'll send out invoices and they will um, be sent to your email address. So uh, let's first start with what that would look like. We have um, we have the email here, and it's it's going to you know mention that it's from Modern Law. Um, if there's any note that is um, from the billing department, it's going to be right here mentioning uh, you know like for this one it says here's your first invoice. You'll notice that it references the invoice number, and then on this invoice it says that the amount due is zero. Um, this can be a little bit confusing. Um, you did deposit funds into your trust account. Uh, and we utilize those funds first um, before asking you to um, deposit like more funds. So the reason why this says zero is when we review the invoice in just a couple of seconds, you'll notice that we satisfied the invoice with the money that was in trust. So there's nothing actually um, due for you um, because that money uh, was taken out of the trust account. One of the other things that this um, email has is um, there's always going to be an attachment that um, actually has your invoice included onto it. So um, you're gonna wanna make sure and um, open up this invoice. And when you open up the invoice, you're gonna get the basic structure of uh, what our invoice looks like. It's gonna reference the invoice number, the date of the invoice, um, and then it has sort of these, these basic line structures that will happen all the time. The date that the transaction happened, um, sort of a reference and then a description of, of what we did to, to move along your case, how long it took us, what uh, rate we're charging, and then what that total amount was. So, you know, the quantity times the rate gives you how much that total um, item took you to do. And then this part here is going to be um, which uh, person in the firm did the action. So I know this does say attorney, um, but it's actually whatever member of the firm did it. So um, I just created this uh, as a, an entirely like sort of fake invoice. Um, and I used Candace Tolley, who's the paralegal manager, and her attorney, Henry Alzate, as um, sort of the, the example. So anytime it references CT, that means that Candace Tolley worked on my, uh, did that transaction, and HA means Henry Alzate. Uh, the other thing to notice is that um, it's always going to be their first and last initial. So um, if you get that first initial welcome email from us, just uh, notice which team members you uh, have that are going to be directly working on your case, and then that will better help you understand which person was doing the transaction. Um, one of the other big things is we have a hybrid in our firm of flat fee and also uh, just straight time. So on the items that are flat fee, which are listed in those terms and conditions that you got emailed when you finished the engagement agreement, one of them is a petition and uh, the flat rate is $800. Uh, 
Um, when we break out flat fees on the invoice, it's always going to come in two transactions. They're going to always reference the flat fee, reference what it was that they're drafting. So this is the petition. And you'll see uh, half of it on one line and then half of it on another line. So the total of the flat fee equals $800, which is what is listed in the terms and conditions. Uh, one of the other things is they'll also continue to do work on that, um, that project, but you'll notice they'll, from that point forward, reference flat fee, track their time, but always block, uh, put it in as zero because you only get charged once for that one particular project. So that's just something that can a little bit get tricky. Uh, on the invoices, there's always going to be a subtotal of the legal services that are due. And then the next section is going to be the expenses. So these are third party expenses that we pay on your behalf and then invoice you on the next billing cycle. So uh, some of the examples are um, the filing fee that the clerk of the court requires for us to file whatever documents we're doing on your behalf. Um, the runner fee that it that uh, we pay for the runner to take the documents to the court and um, file and deliver them. And then um, if your other party needs to be served, um, then the, the service fee. So those are just some examples of fees that might show up or expenses that might show up. Um, then you have the expense total and then you end up getting the total of the two combined for the total of the invoice. Um, you'll see here where then we reference the payment on six uh, 22 and it's the same amount as the total. That's where I was mentioning before that we just um, satisfy the invoice with the funds that are available in the trust account, um, which then leaves the invoice itself at zero dollars because we paid it using your trust account funds. Um, then it's going to break down the statements of accounts. Um, if you don't have any other um, invoices that are unsatisfied, this is always going to reference zero. Um, but uh, in the example that we'll do in just a second, you'll see that um, this will change if there are fees, like if your, your trust account didn't have funds um, and one of these invoices still had uh, uh, money owing, then this would reference uh, whatever that amount was. Um, then we have just a detailed statement, sort of a wrap up of the invoice. And then this section here is um, the status of your trust account. Um, so you notice it references trust account. It'll show the initial deposit and then that this invoice that we're looking at here was um, taken out, leaving a remaining balance and the big balance in bold here of $3,341. So that's sort of the, the concept of the invoice. Um, I'm also going to show an example because this is um, something that uh, sort of gets a mix up. So here's another example where uh, you know, we were going to the hearing, the case is near the end, um, and the person had partial funds in their trust account, but didn't have uh, the full funds to be able to satisfy the entire invoice. Um, so in this reference, the 1641 is the remaining amount that was left in the trust account. And the way that you can always tell that is, you know, if we pop down to the bottom of every invoice, it has that wrap up of what happened in your trust account. So, you know, here was that initial deposit. Here was the first invoice that we just looked at an example of. Then another invoice came on the 20th and it was for 1700, which was taken out of the trust account, leaving 1641 left in the trust account, which then we just used on this invoice to partially satisfy the overall invoice. And then you can see that that brings the trust account to zero. And then you see this amount in bold is at zero. So this isn't referencing that you owe zero dollars. This is simply referencing that zero dollars is remaining in your trust account um, with the firm. So this, once you get to the trust account chase part, this is just summarizing and laying out exactly what and how we use the funds that you put into trust with our firm. Then to pop back up here, so we have the 1641 that we just used to make a partial payment. And then um, this right here is going to be referenced as you making a payment uh, for $500 uh, towards this invoice. Um, it's not going to show in that description below because it's not going into the trust account. That description below here is only going to reference when you put funds into the trust account and then how those funds were used. So if you make a direct payment um, through the emails, so you know we got these emails here. So for this example, it's letting you know that you have a balance. Um, you can click online here and make a payment. 
and uh, it will show you the amounts that are due. This is never going to go into the trust account. It's simply going to pay the outstanding balance with the firm. So that's important to reference because um, you're going to need to know that um, you're gonna, it just helps you understand like why maybe it's not showing up down here. Um, and then this is where I had mentioned, you know, here was the charges, here's the payments that we received, and then here's the outstanding balance. So that sort of lets you know that you're owing the for $514. Um, then the next invoice comes in the cycle and um, it, you know, we're getting off the case, we're wrapping up. Um, and this is where it shows that, you know, the previous invoice that we sent still has a $514 balance. We have the new charges of having to ask the court to uh, remove us as attorney of record because your case is done. So you have an outstanding balance of $619. Um, it's still going to wrap up everything else here showing that you have this balance here. This is the invoice number. This is how much has been paid leaving and then the new invoice. And then this is just the same repeat of what happened in your trust funds. So this is going to be on every single invoice. Um, and it may or may not change depending on if you put more funds or you didn't put more funds into your trust account. Um, but every time you get an invoice, if you have an outstanding balance, you'll see that it's going to recap for you um, the new invoice. And that new invoice is always going to be attached as an attachment for you to review. And then it's going to mention that you have another invoice with an outstanding balance. Um, it also gives you this ease of pay, like I said, for you to be able to then make a payment quickly and easily to pay off that balance with the firm, but it's only ever going to allow you to pay exactly what's due. So uh, the billing department will also, if your case is very active, still uh, reach out to you via email to let you know um, that you do need to deposit funds into your trust account, and they'll give you a separate link that then puts those funds directly into the trust account. So those are just some of the differences. Uh, that's sort of a, the best recap I can give you on um, how to sort of guide through the billing department. Um, we're always here. Marcy uh, Townsley is uh, the billing department. You're the one, she's the one who you'll get correspondence with the most. Uh, my name again was Caitlin Lindahl. I'm the office manager and also oversee the billing department. So feel free to reach out to us at any point in time.